Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and today we're going to do a little bit more of a, a how-to on how to install a backup camera on an aftermarket radio. Now, we're not obviously not in the car, we're at a test bench here, but we're going to show you more of a generic how-to in the event you're looking to install a camera to a radio. Hey guys, this video is sponsored by Banggood.com, your one-stop shop for the hottest electronics, apparel, toys, and more. Use coupon code PROBOBEAST for a discount on select car audio MP3 equipment available. Now the nice thing is with this install, we have it all laid out on the bench, hopefully to make this as clear as possible for you. Now, fortunately, uh, King Yu, who has sponsored some of our videos here in the past, sent over a camera for us. And I'll throw down in the description the link to this camera in the event you're looking to pick one up. Now this camera, the little kit that it comes with, first of all you have your video wire. This wire carries the, the video picture from the camera to your radio. And then finally here we have the camera itself. Now this camera specifically um, is adjustable, it's mountable, you can really hide it in any location. The only drawback to it is it does require you to drill into something, um, as you can see with that little bracket there at the top, but um, as long as you're okay with that, it's, it's a good solution. Other alternatives for cameras are license plate mountable cameras, which we've done multiple times in the past here on this channel. So um, this camera specifically has two ends that come off of it. The red end is your power plug, and then this is your video output from the camera, which will go through this line, like we talked about, to the input on your radio. Now we have our Kenwood doubled in radio here on our test bench. We're going to use this as the example on how to get it all set up. So, all right, so we went ahead and pulled apart our camera um, components that came with this little kit from Banggood. Um, what we have here is our radio. We have our power and ground and everything that you'd find behind the radio in your wiring harness, but we have it here for testing purposes. We have the long 15 foot video wire with little leads that come off the ends as well. We'll show you what those are for. We have our camera itself. Now the camera also has LEDs on the front, which is kind of cool. The camera itself has a power plug as well as a video output plug. The kit came with a camera power wire to power the camera. And that's really it. Now, we have this little light here. This is going to represent our reverse light um, behind the car, just so we can kind of give you a better visualization of how to set everything up. And then we have some T-taps as an alternative for hooking wires up. So, with our radio, typically your radio will always have a reverse wire if it's compatible with a backup camera. This wire will tell the radio to go in reverse or display what the camera sees when the car is going in reverse. So the way that works is this technically needs to either be connected to a power source, which for example on our light here would be this green wire. I mean, and your car may differ in wire color as well. But basically when, that, when this light is on, this needs to also have that power to it um, and then that will automatically cycle your radio over to reverse. The camera needs power. And this little plug here plugs into the red little, um, little plug there on the camera. And the camera needs power. And there's two ways to hook this up. Way number one is you can use these little T-taps. What we do is just put these little ends on here. You'd use a good crimper. I like what this looks like here. And you'd crimp those on. And then on this end, these guys, for example, these are T-taps. And if you haven't seen these before, there it's a nice alternative to um, a really uninvasive way to tap into power. So we'd put those on. Just like so. And then these will plug right into that. So black goes to our negative on our light, which happens to be this white black wire. And then the positive goes to the positive. 
Now the way we have this set up is now the camera, whenever our reverse light is on, is going to get power to turn on to boot up so it can display on our radio. Just like that. Little T-taps. Pretty nice. Um, also, we need to hook up our video wire because now our radio needs to see what the camera is displaying. So one end plugs into our camera video output. Then the other end plugs into your compatible radio's reverse camera input, just like that. And so now the camera's all hooked up. Camera has video output and power. Now, kind of the last bit here is see these little guys that are hanging off our video wire? This video wire has this red wire that actually runs through this bundle as well. And the manufacturer has done this to simplify your life a little bit. Let me show you why. So this end, this actually can plug right in to that reverse gear wire input. And then this end typically would go to the power positive on your reverse light. So in this case, put those two together and hook those two in. Of course, this would be crimped, but this is just for video reference. And the reason we've done it this way is when this light is on, when you're in reverse, not only is it supplying power to the camera, but through this long line, it's going to tell the radio to go into reverse mode. Now, as soon as you put it in park, this light turns off, obviously, because your reverse lights on are not on all the time. This wire is no longer hot. The camera no longer receives power, so the camera turns off, and the radio will switch back to whatever source it was on before, away from the backup camera mode. So that's what makes that super easy as you hook that up. If your video wire didn't have this little red wire lead, you'd have to either run your own wire to the back of the car or sometimes your aftermarket harness in the car will supply one, your smart harness, or you will have to extend this wire and go find somewhere in maybe the kick panel area or something to, to locate that power wire to the reverse light. Now the downside of this setup, sometimes your radio will have the option to view the camera or what the camera is seeing when not reverse, or for example, when you're driving, that may be beneficial if you're towing or bumping a bumper traffic or whatever you need. Um, this setup would not be very conducive to that just because, remember, our power to our camera is only going to work when it's plugged into the light, and the light only gets power when in reverse. So that may mess you up. So the camera is not really on when you're not in reverse. So that function would not work on your radio. So rather, if we, for example, hook these up into the, just tied them into the power and ground of the radio, which would require you to really extend this wire and this all the way up to the front of the car, um, that would es essentially provide power to our camera whenever the key's on instead of just in reverse. So that's an alternative. Now this method would allow the camera to get power constantly when the key is on from the radio and then the video wire, trigger wire, would still go to the positive on the light. So this would allow your radio to actually view the camera because the camera is getting power all the time when you manually switch over to the camera mode while driving on the highway, for example. So. A little bit different set up two different ways to do it um, really is totally up to you depends on the camera you have and the application that's going in so multiple ways to do really the same thing both ways have their pros and cons but it's really up to you to decide which way is best in your install okay so when you boot up your radio you want to make sure your reverse camera input is on in this case it is Sometimes you can find that option in the settings menu of your radio. So we have the radio all booted up. Let's say we're driving and we want to go ahead and put it in reverse. So um, remember, put that on and there you go. <laughs> it's upside down because this is supposed to be mounted the other way around. But as you can see there, that allows you to actually visualize how this works. And let's say we pull out of reverse. 
Now, if you like this camera, we can go ahead and post in the description a link to it on Banggood's website. Um, this is a great little camera for the price and really versatile wherever you want to go ahead and mount it. We're using the Kenwood uh, DDX uh, 6902S model. We're just using this for demonstration and uh, that's about it. So thanks guys for watching this quick little how-to of how to install a backup camera on any car. If you really like this video, hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe for more great future content here on the channel and we will certainly see you in the next video.